What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And of course, it is Wealth Wednesday. So here is my Wealth Wednesday partner, Stacey Tisdale. Happy Wealth Wednesday, everybody. And this one is really going to be a wealth of information. We are talking about how black women can navigate their careers, advocate for themselves, and really navigate corporate cultures with some amazing people. So we're super excited. All right, well, let's get it started and introductions. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, Jackie Glenn, who is now the CEO and founder of Glenn Diversity and HR Solutions. And she is the former global head of diversity of EMC Dell. And we have Sandra Kintz, who is the CEO of Paradigm for Parity. And Angela and I, we know all y'all saw the pictures. We had the pleasure of ringing the closing <laughs> bell at the NASDAQ with Paradigm for Parity. And over a really the great panel. Also, it was really yeah. awesome. a conversation. And we have Andrea Atkinson Downer, who is a product of Paradigm for Parity. And I'm putting on my glasses because I got to get your title right, girl. She <laughs> is the lead distribution engineer at Eversource. Okay. And we're going to talk about that because one, being a female intra, um, engineer, being a black female engineer, lead engineer mm -hmm. is Eversource. So um, all of this stuff is really made possible because of mentoring, support. This is going to be an amazing conversation. A lot coming from an organization called Paradigm for Parity. So why don't we start, Sandra, tell us what it is and tell us about your mission. Oh, absolutely. And thank you so much for having us here today. And so Paradigm for Parity is really an opportunity to engage companies and organizations to achieve gender parity, including racial equity. Um, we all know that women are not represented at every level of mm -hmm. leadership in corporations today. And so our goal and our mission is to ensure gender parity at every level of leadership. And there are so many different ways that we are not represented or sometimes uh, can feel shut down, you know, at work, even when we are attempting to use our voice and not having the support that we need. And so what are some things and some corporation, what are some things that corporations can do and how does uh, Paradigm for Parity help with that? Absolutely. So besides leading from the top, right, because it takes the leadership from the top to have a commitment around diversity, equity and inclusion, we provide a five point action plan. Mm -hmm. um, so it's providing that strategic direction along with key tactics. And that plan includes things like sponsorship, which we know is critically important. Women and ethnically underrepresented talent does not make it to the top in companies or corporations without sponsorship. We also know that it also involves unconscious bias. How do we mitigate? gate bias mm -hmm. in the moments that matter and ensure that we are able to um consciously <laughs> eliminate unconscious bias, yes. right. right? And then we also have, how do we think about our data? Are we, do we know who works for us? And do we know at what level of leadership they are in our organizations? And we know that data leads to um, strategy and then strategy leads to cultural change. And so those are some of the ways that we're helping companies and organizations to really think about their talent from a gender perspective. But we know that once you think about that mm -hmm. talent and you create that strategy, it really does help all of your talent be successful in your organization. I just want to pause for a second. Glasses are back on because I want to give a real flavor <laughs> for... Nice glasses, by the way. I love them. That's my friend. That's my girl. Um, what corporate cultures are really like for black women. And Paradigm for Parity's job is to help us get into leadership roles. So reality check. Women of color make up just 5.5% of senior leadership roles. Black women are one and a half times more likely to be sent home or know of a black woman who was sent home from the workplace because of her Imagine hair. That. Mm -hmm. oh, more than 40% <laughs> of black and Latina women reported being interrupted and spoken over in a work setting. A third of women of color said that others take credit for their ideas. And we did a series last summer on the mental health toll of corporate oh. cultures on black women and yeah. it really blew me away to do this research constant exposure to microaggressions mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff increases anxiety paranoia depression sleep difficulties lack of confidence all that other stuff but it was the physical stuff that really blew my mind because one thing that we all know is black women mm -hmm. you assimilate Mm -hmm. to fit into corporate mm -hmm. cultures, you're mm -hmm. not yourself. Mm -hmm. Boston University, this really blew my mind, found that the chromosomal shifts 
actually take place in black women who are exposed to these microaggressions. It's like our bodies are that intelligent. They literally try to turn us into a different person. <laughs> Diabetes, depression, heart disease, high blood pressure. And I know black women put out 30% more cortisol than white women. So, welcome to our world. <laughs> and welcome to the women who are going right. to fix it. And, you know, and for you, uh, Jackie, I wanted to talk to you about what your experience has been like uh, just having to deal with all of these things. She also is the author of Lift As You Climb as well. but And that's important, too, right, when we get into these positions to make sure that we lift as we climb. But what has been your experience, speaking to what Stacy just said, that black women have to deal with in the workplace? You know, going back, it's been five years since I've exited as a chief diversity officer, and it's triggering. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I said to, uh, I was talking to a young lady last week, and she said to me, you know, now, Jackie, I have a name for microaggression, tone policing, mm -hmm. um, gaslighting. Yeah. And so um, something that Tracy said in one of the studies is that not only were we talked over, but we were labeled. You know, we all know the name angry black mm -hmm. woman. Not, they don't have to say it in front of our face, but we know. Or people are afraid of you, or you're a bully, or just because you show up confidence and, uh, confidently. And I worked in the technology industry, so that within itself, the numbers you give off, it was less than, yeah. you know, when you pull that number apart, I like to dig into the number because the number itself for um, minority women, when you when you really start to dig it and pull it apart, it's less than um, 3%, especially in the technology space. So just imagine being there and being told, you know, people are afraid of you or um, can you you know, bring your voice down a notch when everybody else is F-bombing and throwing stuff. Right. You're not doing that, but just because you show up confidently. So I think that, you know, as we get through this conversation, there's pieces that I'll add to my journey. But my journey brought me to the point where I wrote the book, mm -hmm. Lift As I Climb an Immigrant Girl, because I really felt like I had to subtitle it. Yes. Because... <laughs> You know, being a black woman in corporate America is one thing, but being a black immigrant woman with a thick accent mm -hmm. is a whole nother ball game. So there was a lot of, oh, I don't understand what you're saying, or you have an accent, we're not sure the client is going to want to speak with wow. you, or can we take um, Billy Bob with us because they might fit in with them better. Right, they might mm -hmm. feel more comfortable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have an interesting story. Everyone knows Dell Computer was founded by Michael Dell. Mm -hmm. and uh, Jack, Now Dell Technology. Now Dell Technology, sorry. And you had a interesting Michael Dell run-in at yeah. a board meeting. He sounds kind of cool. Yeah, Michael Dell is cool. And mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of times when you're the only one in corporate America. I mean, I, I know for me, I had a lot of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And so I always feel like people don't know who I am. And so I was coming into the um, Opkinton office one morning, and we just happened to be walking in together. And he said, hello, Jackie, how are you doing? And I went like, <laughs> he knows me. <laughs> and I, I caught my mouth, and I said, because I had this thing, we were going through this merger, <laughs> the largest technology merger in the world. We were going EMC 60,000, Dell 100,000, together 150,000, give or take a few. And I quickly snatched my mouth closed but open and said blessed and highly favored and he said oh that gives me goosebump <laughs> and so I think the the um the other conversation that you're referring the to chair it's with my being in the boardroom with my CEO and um going to present on diversity and when we walk into the room there was 12 seats around the table and it was taken by 12 white guys and this is on the EMC side and myself and my boss, who my boss was a white woman, um, she just edited to the back of the room and sat down. And as I was walking back there, Angela, I mean, I had a, like a, a moment, as Oprah would say, me, a ha moment. Right. And I'm like, Rosa Parks did not <laughs> get arrested <laughs> for me to go back there and pick a chair up and sit back there. So I picked the chair up and I went over to my CEO and this is a Jamaican saying, small up yourself. <laughs> and he was so, <laughs> he just, 
just started laughing and going like this. <laughs> and everybody just moved their other like, tables. Yeah. Make space. And, Make you know, space. And so there are times when you have to figure out all your coping mechanisms. When you and, don't have the seat at yeah, the table. And I, I, I brought my chair yeah, and I told him to up. small up himself. <laughs> and so ever since he saw me, every ever since that incident, every time he sees me, he would say small, small up, up yourself. yourself. <laughs> that is so funny. That's a great case in point. You say mm -hmm. black women, all people really have to own their career journey. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? You know, we were talking about it in the green room that, you know, I, I, I talk to a lot of women with my HR background and I'll, they'll say to me things like, oh, I didn't get promoted or, oh, nobody invited me. And I said, well, did you tell them what you want to do? And did you make it known? Did you put it out there? Because what I found when I was in corporate America, they would say to me, Sandra, well, we didn't know you want to do that. We didn't know right. you want to. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm so wonderful. Right. They're going to tap me. They can't not tap me. And so I said, make your, whatever your aspiration is, known. Absolutely. I, said, yeah. I sure did know. that. I want my own show. Yeah. Yeah. I was one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you put it out there and they can't say they don't know. And this is what I'm looking to do and own it. And I'm always one to say, if you have to pivot, I put a timeline on mm -hmm. it. It's always on, on my agenda when I go in to meet with my boss. And I take the emotion out of it. And I'm an emotional person, but I learned a long time from a mentor of mine. So I'm to be a white guy. Um, I have a lot of those mm -hmm. coming out of corporate, and they've been great because I, I study them. And he said, Jackie, don't get all emotional that you're not, you're the only person. Just go in there, state your what you want right. and what you're looking and why you should get it. Why you deserve it. Yes. Not and why, not just why you want it, but why, why you deserve, deserve it. it. What, what I've been doing yeah. here, mm -hmm. here's the this is what I've been up to. Cause sometimes people don't know. Right. And we assume that just because we've been doing all this work, that they're paying attention. They know sometimes you have to show people, here are the things that I've done. This is what I've accomplished. Here's X, Y, and Z, just so you you can see and this is why I deserve and and also ask is there something I'm not doing that I, I should did. be doing I mm -hmm. said tell me what what do I need to get there but you know a lot of us was raised this um like this where our mom or our parents would just keep your head down do a keep good working job mm -hmm. yeah. oh no mm -hmm. I do not tell my daughters that to keep their head <laughs> down you're kidding keep yeah. Yeah. oh no because <laughs> You gotta. Uh, my mom always says, "Self praise is no praise at all." But if you don't speak up about what you have been doing, we as women, especially black women, we're so modest and we don't want to talk about it because mm -hmm. we think it's bragging. And I it's had not to even learn more than bragging. As I know, Sandra, we we were just talking yeah. about mm -hmm. this, and we're gonna get to Andrea, who's Exhibit A, in <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> but some and your um, Sandra was you know, top executive at Bank of America before she um, was at Paradigm for Parody. Talk about difficult corporate cultures. Mm. And you were saying how we don't feel good all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, it's, it's all of these things we face, they hit our self-esteem, they hit, they hit mm -hmm. our self-confidence. So it's yeah. hard to sometimes know how to navigate that. Absolutely. And I so think- Your journey's incredible in that way. Yeah, and I think part of it too is um, because you don't feel feel good or your self-esteem starts to go down and then you lack confidence mm -hmm. and then what happens mm -hmm. you start to show up in a different way you your work diminishes right and then all of a sudden you are not operating in a way that you know you have the power and the ability to do so and so you have to be you have to understand and know your power number mm -hmm. one I love what you said about um, knowing what you want and Angela you're absolutely right is going into those meetings and having the opportunity to sit down and say this is what I'm looking for this is what I want this is how I've contributed to the organization mm -hmm. this is how I've contributed to the bottom line and for me my career you know um, has started with what I learned over the course of my career is that if you just put your head down and all you're doing mm -hmm. is working you are not doing enough mm -hmm. being able to do your job is bare basic right yeah. that's table stakes yeah. every Everybody and, and, you know, everybody's there to do their job and you get paid for doing your job. But where you start to elevate yourself is where you think about I, number one, own my career 100 mm percent. -hmm. Number two, networking, networking, networking mm -hmm. is critical. Who knows you? Who knows your worth and your value at your organization? And when I became um, at a point in my career where I knew it was time for me to do something mm -hmm. different 
And I, of course, learned some of these quality <laughs> lessons. I went in and I had a conversation with my manager and I said, look, I, I love the work that I do, but it's time for me to do something bigger and broader. Mm. And um, while I love and I want to stay with this organization, I'm going to look externally. And to be honest with you, she encouraged me and said, you should know your value in the market. Right. But give us the opportunity to provide you with that next career, oppor- you know, career move that you're looking for. The next thing she asked me, which is probably one of the most difficult questions to answer, is what do you want? want Mm -hmm. because a lot of times what people think is I want to be promoted Mm -hmm. I want to make more money Mm -hmm. yes those are things that I wanted but that's not the answer that they're looking for again it's articulating Mm -hmm. what are your skills you know um, how have you um, exhibited those skills what experiences do you want to have and it wasn't about a role or Mm -hmm. a job it was about what is it that I wanted to accomplish in my career where did I see myself and then they can go back and advocate meaning they, your manager mm-hmm. and your sponsors and those that you're networking mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. can go back and help you then marry that role to um, or your desire to a role within the organization. And once I had that conversation with her, you know, I I began to look externally and internally. Um, and of course, Paradigm for Parity came mm-hmm. along and my manager had a brilliant idea. Mm-hmm. When they came and said, hey, we're looking for a CEO or no, they didn't say we were looking. They said we're about to hire a CEO. And my manager said, wait a minute. Stop the presses. Hold up. Don't go any further. I think we have a solution. And she got with the head of HR and said, Sandra's looking for something bigger and broader. Mm -hmm. We have a leader on loan program. I know we haven't had someone go out as a CEO, but she would kill it. Mm, that's amazing. And they went and presented that opportunity. This Bank of America I, I is, a, is a paradigm for parity company. So what happens is companies take the pledge to follow uh, Paradigm for Parity's guidelines and action steps to promote gender equality in their yeah. C-suite. Yeah. And as you're hearing these wonderful people, mm-hmm. everybody out there needs to sign up for their free master class on the new realities of black women in the workplace. That's on November 2nd. It's Paradigm, P-A-R-A-D-I-G-M, number four, Parity, P-A-R-I-T-Y dot org slash masterclass. And it's free. It's free. Yes, free. it's free. Put that out there. <laughs> and yeah. all of these gems that you're hearing them, let's now turn to Exhibit A. I love that. Andrea. <laughs> Andrea Atkinson Downer, who works as, um, you're past senior engineer at Eversource, and you actually lobbied your company a little bit to join Paradigm for Parity, which is something else we could all do. Tell us all about you. (laughs) (laughs) So um, we had a webinar with um, Paradigm for Parity. Um, Sandra um, presented the the program to our company. Um, So I knew that I needed to do this. I made up my decision. I'm pretty much gonna just, you know, just push it all the way. And they said, well, you're gonna look for the information to come out. So it was every meeting that we had weekly <laughs> that I was like, did we get any information on Paradigm for Parity? <laughs> so I, I asked yeah. every week. So they were so tired of hearing about Paradigm for Parity. So what happened was, and after I actually had the information and I was trying to make a connection with our human resources department, I finally made the connection to who the person I was supposed to speak to. And I realized that the nomination period was over. So I was like, oh, no, here we go. So now I had to strategize to see how I could still be a part of this program. I said, well, maybe I'm not going to be a part of this program this year. But I happened to be home one day, and I finally, after I called a, z- a million people in human <laughs> resources, I finally, it was one evening, I was in my kitchen, and my computer wasn't, we were working from home to post um, COVID. So... All of a sudden, I hear Microsoft Teams, and it's ringing. I actually got the person (laughs) calling me from Human Resources. So I was like, oh, hold on, one minute, one minute, you know. So she finally talked to me, but did I know that she was actually interviewing me? So I had to create that narrative right there. So it was like that 60-second elevator speech Mm -hmm. that I knew I was prepared for, that I needed to show her that this is why and this is what. I plan on doing with the Paradigm for Parity program and how it works for me. So she was able to connect me with the business partner, even though I was actually speaking with my management team um, that was close to me, more close to me in my role. 
that I was in as a senior engineer. So I wasn't getting anywhere because they didn't know as much information. So then we reached out to Peer and I for Parity, and they opened up and extended the nomination period. Great. Oh, so nice. it was like, who? Thank God. <laughs> you know, so, so I was like, I thought it was like over, and I was like, oh no. I done mentioned it every week and everybody was tired of hearing about Paradigm for Purity. I was even watching the pilot program and I was like, oh my God, I got to get in this program. I don't know how to do this at this point because then I figured it out. So then um, my, I think my director has said to me that next morning after I spoke with her that evening, she must have sent emails to where they needed to be and come to find out that it was actually happening because she was like, well, this squeaky wheel then get, it's going right. to get the oil. Awesome. Yeah. I said, oh, and she didn't say anything else. But then I said, what do you mean by that? She said, you're in. I was like, paradise <laughs> for parody. She was like, yes. <laughs> and I, she didn't see it, but I did shed a little tear because I was really super happy that this was the needle in a haystack that I needed. And um, Angie, what kind of changes and support have you seen since joining Paradigm for Parity? And can since I just interrupt mm-hmm. just for a second, say she got into the Paradigm for Parity Profit and Loss Leadership Accelerator yes. program, okay. which prepares yes. women for operational roles within corporate America. Yes. So I just wanted to clear that up mm-hmm. and, okay. and has just been a stellar star since. So yes. go ahead, Andrea. So um, a lot of changes I have seen. Well, I've always seen changes as far as um, with my role. So I was more or less looking at changes in me. Right. Okay. So we mm-hmm. want to you know? hear about, yeah. yeah so so I was more, I was gaining more confident, more confidence in things. I was actually um, just really being mindful of how I'm showing up, mm-hmm. you know? So we you know when people see me, they see me as a successful, safe, secure leader, you know, and people start seeing me like that. And I, and it built my confidence. Mm-hmm. It built my resilience, you know. And I think when, you know, when it first started with, um, you know, with the nomination date was behind. And I was like, oh, no. But I could tell you now, I know how to get around that. I know how to strategize. Right. Give us a summary of your journey from single mother to mm-hmm. getting to this. And uh, oh. you said, you know, confidence and self-esteem has always been an issue. Yes. Yes. So I always was told, even when, um, you know, going through, um, you know, my college and my college years and, you know, and, and always getting that no, you know, and I was like, oh, my God, this is and I never stopped. Mm-hmm. So I literally had I've applied at Eversource so many times. It was ridiculous. And I said, you know, what? one day I'm going to get a, I'm going to get that. Yes. You know, I knew being a single mother that I didn't want my daughter to see the struggle. Mm-hmm. You know, there's always a struggle. You know, I've always made sure I was an A student, you know, and I always, you know, make sure that she sees that she doesn't have to struggle Mm because I would make that struggle for I would do the struggle for her. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the the point there. Um, Coming up in New Hallville, I came up through New Hallville. My family always were givers. I'm from New Haven, New Haven, Connecticut. So we have like three streets named after us and we have a legacy there. Nice. I spend a lot of time in the community. I I give back. I tutor every Saturday um, to underserved students um, mm. because I believe that's so important that yeah. I give it back. And it's mm. free. And making so much in a very male-dominated mm. career. You were telling me how hard it was to be an engineer. Oh, <laughs> yes. I mean, like, it's just that we're not supposed to be there and they don't see the black woman. They may see they may see mm. a engineer as a white male. That's right. But so you may get that in some instance where you can be at a ro- a job or something and they'll be like, "Well, who's in charge?" <laughs> and you know, no one says anything cuz mm. they know it's the black mm. female that's in charge. But the person will automatically assume it's always the white male mm. that's in charge. But when they realize that you know your stuff and you know you can't take it they can't take it from me because I've set myself up in that way. Mm. I've even put myself out there working because I knew that I was always going to get a no. So I, what I did was I took a different turn. When I worked for a public utility company, I decided that I wanted to be an engineer. But I knew that I needed to go a different path mm. because this was a much harder path. I had to go out in the field and work. So I was in those manholes working. Wow. I performed the job of the engineer because I knew that yeah. they wouldn't be able to take that from me. So when they see my resume, they see me hopping, doing two programs, two colleges at the same time, it says something. It says that 
I persevered, Mm -hmm. you know, and my daughter was a part of it. She saw it. Right. So that was so important that I didn't let her down Mm -hmm. because she needed to see me finish. And I feel like we do always have to be in a position where we're overly qualified, Mm -hmm. overly Mm -hmm. prepared and always Mm -hmm. uh, knowing every aspect, whereas some people may not have to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, as a woman, some people don't don't have to do that. It Mm -hmm. ends up being a plus. So my mom used to always say, you have to be 10 times better. Better. And it was hard and didn't feel good. But guess what? One day you're 10 Mm -hmm. times better. Mm -hmm. And I I, I also wanted you to touch on what skills did you get? from Paradigm for Parody that have helped you move into, now you're like the boss, you're boss lady now. Yeah, so um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's I'm, I think I'm more like, I, I love the guys that work for me. Um, the skills that Paradigm for Parody has given me is the resilience, my self-confidence, mm-hmm. Because I, I really would sit back and just let, you know, just I would speak out. But I think it was like there's times that you can't speak out because, you know, people value your ideas, being innovative, and you have ideas. So if you speak out, people will see how you show up. Mm-hmm. Um, those um, skills were very good. Um, one thing, the other part of it is to be able to influence others. You know, and I've learned that, too. And I've learned that I had to speak up for myself and advocate for myself because Mm -hmm. no one was going to do that for me. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason why I'm here at the Paradigm for Parity, because I was like, hella high water. I'm if I have to go all the way to the CEO, I'm going. And I didn't care. It even earned me, um, you know, a right to actually have. And it was weird because I had a mentor um, at uh, at Eversource and she's a C-suite black woman. Um, very respected woman and she actually I asked her to be my mentor I didn't know her but I said I gotta really strategize with this one <laughs> so I told her I said you know what you don't know me you don't know me from Adam but this is we share a common interest here mm-hmm. And I showed her the interest that we shared I showed her the things that I was going to be working on and you know at the end of it she said you showed up every time you right. did the work. Yeah, because being a mentor is work, too. And I want to talk to uh, Jackie and Sandra about the difference between being a mentor mm. and a sponsor and how do people find a good mm. uh, mentor or a good sponsor. Yeah. So, Sandra, I know you saw this quote somewhere, but I saw it this morning, and I just really had to write it down. But it says a coach talks to you, a mentor talks with you, and I add a third, a sponsor talks about you mm-hmm. and so I like that depending on where you are in mm-hmm. your career you might you definitely need one of them and one of the biggest thing that I've done over the years and we were talking is making sure that I coach young women and mm-hmm. mentor them mm-hmm. when you get into the c-suite or you get to the director vice president you need a sponsor mm-hmm. you need someone that is talking about you when you're not in mm-hmm. the room mm-hmm. and I have to tell you i wouldn't be sitting here before you if if I didn't have some white guys just just loved how I showed up. Mm-hmm. I they were not intimidated by me. They could tell me about myself and still be friends with me. And they weren't afraid mm-hmm. and they would mm-hmm. talk about me when I wasn't in the room. Right. And and I feel like that sponsorship right there and depending on where you are, I encourage all young women that are listening to really get yourself a coach, because sometimes people need to be told about themselves. <laughs> like you're showing up raggedy today, and you don't need that. <laughs> or you need to stop, take a deep breath, and extend some grace. I had mm-hmm. to say that to one of my coaches. She just kept saying, you know, these people are out to get me. And I said, so give me an example. And I said, you know, how about just extending some grace? I think we are in this era that mm-hmm. I'll talk about later where mm-hmm. we just, just extend some, meet people where they're at. Everything mm-hmm. is not to get you, even though. There's some stuff out there to get you, Mm -hmm. but everything is not about that. And when you have a coach, a a mentor, or a sponsor, you really need to mix it up there. So you can't be like, okay, Jackie and Sandra, can can you guys be my coach because I want a black coach? Yeah, you need a black coach, but you also need a white coach, Mm -hmm. an Hispanic coach. Mm -hmm. You need an LGBT coach. Q, a coach you need, a coach with a visible or invisible disability. I have a coach on all the dimensions of diversity mm-hmm. because I'm not 
I'm not versed in all of them. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we just gravitate to people that look like us and we're comfortable with. And this old notion of sameness is real. Oh, let me just go to Angela because she's my girl. And when I should go to Billy Bob because right. he's kicking it and I want to know how he does it. Yeah. Absolutely. How, yeah. There's and some I'm, people that I'm not that close with who've done a lot for me. Absolutely. Right. You know, right. and sometimes yeah. it's not going to be your friends or the, and it's great, you know, when we help each other. Right. But sometimes you do have to get out of your comfort yeah. zone, like mm -hmm. you said, and go to somebody who. You may not know like that, and you'll be surprised at the things mm -hmm. that your work can speak for itself, and people have no problem vouching for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. I do think there's something to um, what you also shared about, you know, how do you become a good, get, put yourself in the position to be sponsored or put mm -hmm. yourself in the position to be coached or mentored. And, you know, like you said, as a mentor, you're there to listen mm -hmm. and bounce ideas off of. And mm -hmm. when you show up raggedy, you mm -hmm. know, girl, pull yourself <laughs> together. Yeah. yeah. So that is the mentor piece. But the sponsor piece is very different. Mm -hmm. And I have to be able to articulate to my sponsor, you know, the the work that I lead, the value that I bring, the projects that I'm in. And I have to get myself ready for that because a sponsor is putting their personal and professional capital behind mm -hmm. you. They're the ones sitting at the table and saying, hey, I really think Andrea should be promoted. And here are the reasons why. And mm -hmm. they can speak to the why. Mm -hmm. And then they can say things like, you know, and I'm willing to help her and make sure that she's successful in her role. And so as a protege or someone who wants to be sponsored, you have to know your why. You also mm -hmm. have to be able to articulate your value and your worth and the work that you're driving and leading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be able to demonstrate that in a way that someone wants to sponsor you. And I do think there's a notion around, um, let me just talk a little bit about executive coaching because I think executive coaching is another great opportunity mm -hmm. that we sometimes don't take advantage of. I never had an executive coach until I came into this role as CEO. Mm -hmm. Masterclass, and, free masterclass, keep going. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you have an executive coach, especially as you begin to progress your career within corporate America or wherever you are, mm -hmm. that executive coach really helps you to think about two things. Number one, they help you to think about yourself and Absolutely. why you feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So you go back to the person, Jackie, mm -hmm. that said, mm -hmm. oh, I think, you know, they're all against me. Mm -hmm. Well, an executive coach will help you dive into the why mm -hmm. behind the way you're thinking mm -hmm. about that, but then help you shift your thinking and help you think about how to show up differently right. and better in your environment. So I think an executive coach is amazing, and I think if you do what Andrea mm -hmm. did and you ask, mm -hmm. hey, one of the things that I'm looking for is to have an executive mm -hmm. coach. Will you support me? Will this okay. organization support me on that journey? And also a board of directors. Absolutely. So when you think about a mentor and those mm -hmm. that are very different from mm -hmm. you, I say three to five people is mm -hmm. always good. You want someone in the company and someone external mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you really want to get a broader perspective. Yes, you do. Yes, and you, you need do. that to be successful. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Absolutely. You're touching on um, so many things because – that whole go it alone, particularly when a women of color mm. have, you really yeah. can't. You, you need can. this coaching. You need those kind of skills. Absolutely. And um, wanting to definitely talk about that go it alone. And Jackie, you, you say we're kind of in a new era now mm -hmm. where we have to look at things like mentoring and coaching differently mm -hmm. because – the way cor you know corporate cultures are set up now, black women are actually pitted against each other mm -hmm. for that top job. So what are the five P's of this new era that we're in? So, you know, 2020 came up on us like a hot flash. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call it that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. And um, I call, people were just calling me and asking me, Jackie, so what do I say after the murder of George Floyd? And I got off the phone and I said, you know what we're in right now? We're in the era of the five Ps. Mm -hmm. And the five Ps are the pandemic, mm -hmm. politics, because when 2020 was an election year, we're seeing a lot of protests, prejudice, and people are polarized. Okay. So nothing that you did before 2020, you can show up and do it the same way. Right. Because I feel like we're in a different era. And why do I say that? I say that because... You know, Sandra, people now know mm -hmm. what tone policing is. Mm -hmm. People know, 
if you says to them, you know, I mean, the, the guys I work with in technology used to say, you know, why do we have to do a special program for people of color? I pull myself up by my bootstrap. Mm -mm. So that old bootstrap theory. We know that that's that's microaggression. You know, um, we know that, you know, um, psychological safety. Yeah. Um, that's all I talk about. Psychological safety. Do I feel psychologically safe when I show up at work? And what are the signs that I'm in a psychologically dangerous environment? Right. And so this era that we're in, people are showing up more aware. They're showing up unapologetic. Mm -hmm. Manager can't do. Um, <laughs> I got a call the other day because someone, you know, walk into her organization and tell them, you know what? I need to move to Detroit because I do not feel psychologically safe in this environment. And I'd like to work remotely and era the reason why. And she had a whole laundry list. Right. And they had to stop. And they couldn't just brush her off and tell her, you know, years ago before 2020, right. really like, no, you're not working remotely. <laughs> and don't you know, we ended up giving her a hybrid schedule because she could point the things that happened in the workplace that made her feel psychologically unsafe. unsafe. Right. And that is a big thing. That is that a I huge And thing. this era have brought out a lot more deliberate and intentional um, intentionality about how people show up at work and what they will and will not take. Mm -hmm. We could go on forever. I know. We're going to have a part short. two. Um, you're all amazing. Thank you so much for going really into the heart of this. And you, um, Paradigm for Parity, you're doing a free master class. Tell us about that, Sandra, and how people can sign up. Yeah, so our master class series is coming up, so you'll get a chance to hear more from Jackie Glenn. Oh, we love that. I know. <laughs> and Stacy Tisdell and yes. myself, Sandra yeah. Quince. Yes, so we hope you'll join us. And that master class, as Stacy said earlier, if you go to Paradigm, the number four, parity.com, backsplash, master class, you'll be able to sign up for this free, courageous conversation, the realities of black women in the workplace. We'll have the opportunity to empower black women with skills and support um, just like um, we provided for Andrea. So yeah. we hope that you'll join us. And keep in mind, if you're not a black woman, you should still sign up. You get all these yes. skills. Are yes. awesome. get, yes. Yeah, the skills are awesome for, and they work for everyone. And it also gives you an opportunity to broaden your own perspective and see it from a different point of view. So we hope you'll all take the opportunity to join us here in November for our masterclass series. And it's going to be November 2nd at 11 o'clock. AM. And say that website again because I think it's .org. Yep, Paradigm 4, the number 4, parody.org. You're absolutely <laughs> right, Stacey. Like, Backsplash <laughs> Masterclass. That's right. All it is right. .org. Okay. Thank you. All, All right. right. Thank you so much. I love the work that you've been doing and for you ladies to be up here with us today. And it's a pleasure right. to see you again also. It's always a pleasure. Good to be here. Thank you yeah. so much. And you all do not want to miss tonight on Wealth Wednesday's After Party with our very own Jay White. We have Amy Luciano, also known as Pretty Kid talks about her very intimate skin care line. That's mm -hmm. her intimate skin care. <laughs> <laughs> pretty Sounds Kitty. Intimate. Yeah, Pretty Kitty tonight. <laughs> Jay White. Pretty Kitty tonight on Wealth Wednesday's After Party with Jay White. And you can get that by going to YouTube and going to j.white-the-federal-code. Way up.